Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here. For the first three seasons, the Ben 10 openings consisted of stock art, amusing VFX, and clips from the franchise. In this video, I'll be breaking down the source locations for each and every episode clip in the openings to Classic, Alien Force, and Ultimate Alien. I do Omniverse in the reboot too, but those openings are made up completely of original animation, so there's nothing to source. Some of these clips are very obvious, and some I had to search each episode frame by frame for a long time to find them so there's a decent scavenger hunt hidden in these episode intros. A fair amount of these clips are also at different speeds than how they appear in the episodes, so when matching up the clips, I will be adjusting the frame rate accordingly the best I can. I'll also be tying in some easter eggs, trivia, and production facts to spice things up. So let's get ready for this fun espionage. We begin with a few custom graphics and Adobe Flash looking animations. The Flash animations were handled by Renegade Animation, who also does the iconic alien lineup sequence later on this opening. We see our first episode clip, straight from the pilot episode. Aside from the cuts, the footage lines up pretty well with the episode. Curiously enough, the Heat Blast transformation doesn't completely match either of the Heat Blast's classic transformations. You'll notice that the opening has an extra second or two of animation at the beginning, and it lacks the dramatic lighting VFX. We continue with a few more graphics of stock alien art renders that were created by Andrew C. Robinson before we lead to our second clip also from the pilot, which is Wild Mutt's transformation. These clips are also chopped up at a slightly different speed from the source clip, and lacking some VFX. The next 22 seconds, which is a good third of the opening, is made up of Renegade Animation's flash visuals and showcasing more of Robinson's art. We end with a showcase of clips from the first few episodes of Season 1. The clips go as follows. The Wild Mutt scene is also from the pilot episode during the drone fight. Then Diamond Head's first transformation before he battles Vilgax's gigantic drone in the trailer park. Then completing the pilot footage, a shot of Ben testing out Heat Blast's powers. We finally get clips from episodes outside of the pilot with Washington BC of Ben slamming the Omnitrix, which actually contains a few extra frames of animation before and after the initial arm gesture. In the same episode, we get this shot of Gwen fighting one of Dr. Animos' mutations. Next, we have a shot of forearms, which was actually taken from the unreleased test pilot animation that I did a video on last year, and I will link below. We finish the clips off with a single clip from the Kraken of Accelerate making his way out of the water back to land. Fun fact, as the clips are switching, you can see the Accelerate clip accidentally overlapping the forearms clip for a few frames. The opening ends with a combination of Renegade and Robinson's art swirling into an illustration of Ben, presumably drawn by Dave Johnson himself, the original character designer for Classic. Stop! Think about this. You could be saving the penguins, creating time travel, or even helping an old lady across the street. Fuck that! Why would you do any of that when you could be playing Raid Shadow Legends? Now, you probably heard a few things about Raid Shadow Legends by this point. Save my mom, Nobel Peace Prize, etc. But what you didn't know is that Raid is celebrating his three year anniversary this month. <laughs> Speaking of the number three, let me tell you about my top three favorite factions. First, you have the Demon Spawn, creatures created by unholy union of mortals and demons. Then you have Skinwalkers, creatures powerful enough to take the form of man or beast, but eventually found themselves trapped as something less than human, but more than animal. Finally, my all-time favorite faction are the Dark Elves. This may be a simple reason, but I just love their aesthetic and color scheme of most of their heroes. This month, Raid is celebrating its three-year anniversary and it's gonna be huge. They've got an insane amount of things in store. Raid's kicking things off with free gifts for everyone, then adding in a bunch of new content and events. We're talking new champions, new artifact sets, and a fully personalized video showcasing every player's raid journey and their own personal achievement. If that's not enough, they've got a full month of special events and tournaments with some of raid's best prizes ever on offer. That includes badass champions, piles and piles of shards, and tons of other goodies. Raid is huge already, and their whole anniversary event makes it an awesome time to join the raid community. So don't wait around, this is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you're not playing Raid yet, hit the link in the description below and you'll get a huge birthday package worth $40. We're talking three free champions at once, Misery Cord, Tiger Soul, and Romero. Plus you'll get 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. 
that's huge. Just click right here and all this treasure will be waiting for you. And since it's Raid's birthday, the gifts keep coming. All new and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts worth over $25. Once you're in game, after clicking on the links, just enter promo code 3 years raid to get your hands on everything. Simple. The promo code is available until May 14th. And it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and we'll see you in the game. In the third and fourth seasons, Classic's opening gets a slight update, which we will cover right now. The biggest difference of all is Ghost Freak's art has been replaced with Cannon Bolt. You might notice that the art stills aren't simply switched out, but the backgrounds are different as well, suggesting that they were either unable to edit the source file to make this adjustment, or it was just easier to do it this way. There are also some frames removed in the newer version before Grey Matter's art appears, perhaps to squeeze in more episode clips, now that they have more footage. Our first new episode clip comes from the season 2 finale back with the Vengeance, with Ben watching the Omnitrix's dial rotate. With the frame being cropped much larger than the original Wild Mutt clip, it looks as though this new clip was just pasted directly on top of the older footage too. The second clip is from Cannonbolt's transformation sequence, first shown in season 2's The Big Tick. This transformation has all of the VFX intact. The intro remains the same for now, but during the Alien lineup, Renegade replaced Ghost Freak's animation with Cannonbolt. It's a little noticeable as Cannonbolt's animation is a lot more detailed than all of the other models. Then, during the final clips montage, all of the clips were replaced aside from the pilot footage of Wild Mutt, perhaps because it was still tied to the Flash animation's transition. Our first new clip comes from Season 3's A Change of Face, where Diamond Head learns to project crystals to surf between buildings. We then get two clips from Season 1's finale secrets, one of Heat Blast flying out of the Rust Bucket, and the second of Accelerate running around Mount Rushmore. We stay back in Season 1 with one more clip, of Forearms fighting Hex's living gargoyles in Lucky Girl. And finally, we end with one of the most iconic Ben 10 shots of all time, from the episode Back with a Vengeance. Another fact that may point to them simply editing the intro's exported footage rather than editing the source files is that Ghost Freak is still visible during the final Omni swirling animation, despite Cannibalt replacing him. Now we're on to Alien Force. Every clip used in this opening is from the first four episodes of Alien Force Season 1, most likely because those were the only episodes available to the intro creators at the time. These episodes are Ben 10 Returns Parts 1 and 2, Everybody Talks About the Weather, and Kevin's Big Score. Due to the large amount of graphics that will be on screen, I won't be posting the title card signifying each episode for this opening as we go through it. Instead, I will just mention them verbally. Similar to Classic's opening, the Alien Force intro is primarily made up of episode clips and still images. We begin with two simultaneous clips from Ben 10 Returns Part 1, a flipped green-tinted clip of Ben reacting to the DN alien, and then the Omnitrix recalibrating. We move on to five clips at once, most of which coming from Ben 10 Returns Part 1 and 2. Ben using the Omnitrix to transform into Echo Echo, Gwen using her mana in Everybody Talks About the Weather, Gwen creating a shield to protect Kevin and Labrid from the night, Kevin lifting up the ground, and a flipped silhouette of Kevin's car driving. We then briefly get a shot of one of the transformation sequence spheres, which is presumably also from the pilot, along with Ben turning around with the classic Omnitrix, and a stretched blue clip of Kevin using his badge on the rust bucket in Kevin's big score. We get a very quick shot of Ben riding his bike from the pilot before we reach Swampfire, surrounded by microscopic cell animations. There are three episode clips here too, one of Swampfire leaping through some flames, Another immediately after of DN aliens getting burned, which is actually taken from Alan fighting the DN aliens. And thirdly, more burning DN aliens. Interestingly enough, the first and third shots are nowhere to be found in the actual episode. I'm going to assume they're from deleted scenes. We then switch to Chromastone, who didn't have any animated scenes yet, so we're treated to a bunch of flashy colors and this awkward shot of Ben from Kevin's Big Score. Big Chill scene sneaks in that Echo Echo clip once more, along with a shot of him dodging lasers from Kevin robbing the rust bucket. We're also treated to an extra image of Big Chill projecting out of the Omnitrix to show his cloaked form. With Humongosaur, we have two scenes of 
Humongosaur fighting the Dean aliens on the high breed ship, along with a shot of the ship taking off, and an interesting, unique animation of rocks forming a wall. Brainstorm lacks any clips as well, so we get a shot of Ben transforming back from Big Chill played in reverse, on top of images of lightning. Jet Ray's sequence has three clips, two from Everybody Talks About the Weather, showcasing his air skills, one showing him dodging fire, and another of him transforming back to Ben, although with different VFX than the actual episode. Then we have Ben's close-up of his eyes from Ben 10 Returns Part 1 which was also shown for a few frames just before the Jet Ray sequence. In between Jet Ray and Spider Monkey's sequence, we have two random Echo Echo clips that fly by for some reason, one of a sonic scream, and another of the Echo Echoes recombining together. Spider Monkey, although lacking clips, has a very strange sequence. We get a shot of Ben looking at the Omnitrix from Ben 10 Returns Part 1, the scene where he asks for advice, and then Ben just after hearing Max's hollow message from Kevin Big Score. But there also appears to be an overlaid water animation on top of these frames, which comes from when the sheriff was trying to extinguish Alan's flames. With Echo Echo, we briefly get Ben's close-up eye shot again, along with a huge shifted clip of Echo Echo's transformation, along with sneaking in that shot of Ben selecting that alien a third time just for good measure. You can tell they were really running out of decent footage. We also get Echo Echo leaping, and then his screaming clip again. Lastly, for Alien X, we get Ben selecting Swampfire's hologram to fight the DN aliens, along with an animated background, presumably reused from an episode but with the foreground characters removed. For the shot of the trio, we get Gwen defending against the knights on the left, with Kevin driving to go meet Arjit on the right. In the middle, we have the first and only clip of animation made specifically for the intro, unless you count all of the digital backgrounds and effect elements and such. We end on a clip of Ben about to use Echo Echo against Arjit before swirling into the logo, where you can briefly see some more stock images and that awkward angry shot of Ben. Now, we move on to the final opening, which is Ultimate Alien. This one easily has the most amount and diverse set of clips, but ironically, not a single one of them is actually from Ultimate Alien. These clips are all from Alien Force, primarily Season 3. Let's take it apart. We begin with a fully animated original clip of Ben running forward, slamming on the Ultimatrix. The shot is pretty great, but the Ultimatrix appears to activate by itself and displays no hologram. There's a lot of clips in the background, so let's run through them pretty quickly. The clips go as follows. Gwen's Karate Tournament from Ben 10 Returns Part 1. Cooper disassembling his mech suit from War of the Worlds Part 1. And also from the same episode, Asmuth drinking a smoothie on top of Kevin's car, and Kevin jumping out of his car to fight some DNA aliens. Shortly after, continuing from the same episode, we get Darkstar shooting a DNA repair gun, along with a flipped shot of Kevin on Ragnarok's ship from Vendetta. The shot of Kevin does seem to change quickly, but I can't find this exact clip as there's not a lot of identifying features in it, other than it's also flipped. There also appears to be a few frames of a shot with some sort of impact, which I believe is just Kevin smashing Ragnarok's spaceship controls. After that is a flipped shot of Gwen fighting Albedo in the final battle part 1, which then cuts to a shot of Gwen fighting Vilgax on Primus. Directly above, we get a shot of Julie playing tennis all the way back in season 1's peer pressure, which of course has also been flipped. Dead center, we got a shot from one of my favorite scenes of Alien Force Season 3, which is Alan versus Big Chill. Here he's shown creating a shield of flames. Above him is a shot of Darkstar inside the Null Void Force Field from War of the Worlds Part 1. Just after that, we see Kevin wailing down on a red Tekadon from the beginning of Primus. This is then followed by a flipped shot of Paradox using a DNA repair gun. And then, from the same episode, a flipped shot of the trio dramatically walking down the street. As we come to a close, we see for a few frames a shot of Cooper's missiles destroying the DNA Aliens, which is then cut off by Helen running away from Echo Echo in Above and Beyond. Also from that episode, we get Pierce elongating his quills to get ready to fight against Big Chill, and then cuts to a scene that happens later on when he is fighting Humongosaur. We then go back to War of the Worlds and continue one of the first clips we saw of Cooper creating the DNA repair guns, along with him creating his mech suit back in the basement scene. We fast forward to Season 3's Vendetta once more to watch Max fight against Ragnarok in an effort to save Devin. We end with a clip of Alan fighting off the DNA aliens from War of the Worlds Part 1, along with a shot of Gwen in her Lucky Girl outfit from Time Heals. 
The opening was boarded by Pete Conlon, where over on his website you can find prototype versions of the opening that differ from the original. The first version showcases the aliens on a reflective floor, where in the original opening they're simply on a pure black floor. The circuit patterns are also arranged differently, and are three-dimensional. The biggest change is that it uses an entirely different set of clips, although they are still exclusively from Alien Force. It also has different VFX for the logo and the background. The second version has the circuit patterns the same as the official version, although now presented in turquoise instead of green. The ground is neither reflective or black and crops the alien's feet to the bottom of the screen. The backgrounds for the final shot and logo are again different. Some line work was also recently discovered by Pedro Ostadio, who presumably drew all of the aliens used for the intro, including the UA versions of the classic aliens. The two most curious cases involve Ripjaws, who has had two different line arts, one of them depicting him with a closer design to his classic appearance, and Heat Blast, who seems to have green eyes, although this was nixed for the series. This information was given to me by Rox who you may remember from our pilot video. She is also starting a Lost and Found blog about Cartoon Network in general, so check that out down below when you get a chance. Also, the fourth chapter of 5YL Recalibrated is now available on my website. That's about all I have to say for this video, so I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.